what have you thought of the fallout from the Tuesday night battle, the ratings results, and the very level-headed um, reactions uh, from various uh, sides? You you've weighed in on on some of this. Let me let me tell you everybody one thing. If ever I was going to go that way, I'm never <laughs> ever doing it on Twitter. Okay, <laughs> he is, dude. He is an artist yeah. when it comes to carving out, or I should say, chopping down. Uh, some person coming at him, I would never fight you in that arena. It's just, uh, it just could not be done way. You are really good on Twitter. <laughs> I don't even know what that means to be really good on, on Twitter. I mean, I, I, I don't tweet that that often, like unless it's, it's for promotion, but sometimes I feel inspired to say something. And, and I guess this was one of those cases. Cause again, I'm somebody who thinks a lot about like, you know, like, how people come across to the public. I mean, I, I have to think about that for our business, you know, and I have to think about it as we criticize, a, a, you know, a professional wrestling company. And I thought the way he's he's been handling himself on social media this week, honestly, has been. Well, um, well let's let's recap. He being sure. Tony Khan. And so the, yeah. the ratings came out on on Wednesday. And if you want a detailed analysis, myself and Brandon did go live on Wednesday. So we'll kind of a uh, the, the actual ratings analysis. You can go there. But in essence, it was like it was a big win for for NXT, especially in total viewers in 18 to 49. It was narrower. It was a point three oh to a point two six that I do not look at as as a failure uh, mm-hmm. for AEW. The fact that they did a point two six on the unfamiliar night and the fact that you had. A, com- a combination of these two audience on a Tuesday night against uh, a Major League Baseball playoff game, the start of the NHL season. I looked at these numbers as nothing to be um, too downtrodden over um, if you are the AEW side. And I think for a, I think for NXT, I mean, it showed you um, what an enormously promoted show, uh, what you can generate. And they did a massive number. This was their most watched NXT since they since September of 2019 to uh, put that into perspective. And they're in way less cable homes today than they were four years ago. So mm-hmm. a, a very impressive number, um, which, I mean, I, w- I wasn't going to point that out that, you know, if you do take into account the cable homes, that would probably, you know, if you adjust to 2019 levels, that would technically put NXT over a million, wouldn't it? I, I guess there's inflation when it comes to um, these sort of TV ratings too, isn't there? Well, we won't get into that, but I guess uh, the... What do we call this? The the X in question? I don't know. I, and I don't know if there's a consensus about it. Um, the post? No, uh, that's our I word. I guess so. Elon yeah. doesn't get that too. Well, yeah. anyway, Tony Khan, um, you know, th- this week he was, he was very, um, he had his phone very close to him. He was on, he was on X for a good amount of the week. And uh, one of his it, tweets was his birthday. Week. It was his birthday on Tuesday, yeah. best birthday of his life. And he noted that, Two legendary streaks came to an end this week, and that was The Undertaker and John Cena appearing on a show that did not do a million viewers or 400,000 in the demo, which to his knowledge is the first time that has ever happened to The Undertaker and John Cena with the uh, <laughs> the four best words for, for any, uh, any person uh, launching a subtle attack with all due respect. And mm. I don't know, I... I took this at first as sort of him just being in jest here, um, but he was certainly, I mean, roundly criticized. I think not. Can you explain the jest part of it? I mean, it's just it's such a common um, it's it's such a common reaction that I see personally of everyone that is so fixated on AEW hitting. Well, it wasn't a million viewers when they hit like a 950 or so. It's always the million viewers is some like this grand achievement. So I almost took it as him making his own Tony Khan type of joke in that way. Um, But regardless, I I thought that this was just, I mean, not a great uh, reaction to things. And he totally opened himself for all the criticism that came his way. I also think this guy is very much of the idea of, Tweet something absolutely insane that's going to get people's attention. And then, boom, within less than an hour, we're making a match announcement. And this is his idea of promotion. And you can argue whether that's an effective form of promotion or not. But a lot of the discussion this week was not about next week's Dynamite or this weekend's Collision, where you have a huge match with Danielson and Christian. The discussion is mainly about Tony Khan's tweets. And I don't think anyone's tuning into a show because of your the head of your company and what he's tweeting. 
Yeah. You know, just to maybe like backtrack just a little bit, you know, like even even let's just say that's his strategy, you know, say something controversial, get get it blown up, maybe get it ratioed and then um, tweet about a match and uh, promote the match. I never think it's ever a good idea to mortgage your public favor for attention. That sounds so stupid to me. Um <laughs> I and I, I for his benefit, I hope that that's not his strategy, because uh, if it is, I think there's it's just like one of several um, instances of of this company really needing to question, you know, um, how he views promotion, and specifically social media promotion, because I think the man is a very good booker. He's a terrific professional wrestling booker, um, but when it comes to like. This past week in particular, I think even prior to this, like there have been instances. Yes, we remember like the big swole thing, um, but, but, but like for the for the most part, he just kind of like he's fine. But for whatever reason, this NXT battle on Tuesday has really kind of like it set him off like in a different way in the lead up to it. And it, it's not just, you know, a, 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 an X like this. It's um <laughs> I, what was it like, you know, posting the, the Curb Your Enthusiasm uh, gifs, you know, like um uh a, a whole lot of other things that i ultimately like again it's fun it's it's definitely fun to follow it's fun to talk about but i think it's very unbecoming of somebody who should be the leader of a promotion um the boss you know the the the, the captain of the entire ship like this is the type of shit posting that you should leave to i don't know um I'm trying to think um uh Giff, griff garrison you know, or like, I don't know, it's just some, somebody else that's that's affiliated with you, but could take the bullets. You should not be taking those shots as, as the captain. And if you are going to, you better make sure that you know how to do it properly. And this guy does not. You know, he like he thinks he's being clever like that. The, the jest that you were trying to explain, John, how many people would understand that? What fraction of the audience is he is he speaking to that would understand, you know, the whole million conversation that would understand the joke? And especially in as poor of a way that he, as as he worded it here. Well, I'll say this about Tony Khan. I, I don't think that th there's I understand the the need that you want to give off this, this presentation that you are that the head of this big company and that you're very professional. I can also look at it from, from the sense of when, when we talk about with, with MMA and I think Scott Coker is like a tremendous promoter. I think, I think he is the kind of guy you will, you are never going to worry about him saying something that's going to embarrass you. If you're Viacom, if you're Bellator, he's very professional. He is very fair. He has got, you know, fighters that all speak very glowingly of the guy. He is also someone that is never going to excite you with an interview that he's going to do or it, like, and that is part of the job of a promoter is to garner attention. And you can ask a hundred different people, what is the best form of attracting attention? And it's all philosophy and everyone's going to have different answers. And one answer, like you and I could do the exact same thing. And People might be way more receptive to the way Way presents something than me. Odds are he would be. And like that comes down to the personality. Tony Khan is, is not the best public figure. And I think people can very much see that in his interviews. And the fact that we see all these different variations of him, like here we get the person that is, you know, this member of the Jacksonville Jaguars ownership who is very by the book on these media calls. He's very guarded about information. And then we see this dude who just goes to town online and it's as though we're seeing a different personality. And I think people just get confused of like where, you know, it's like he has different voices for different mediums. And I think that sometimes it's also the fact is with AEW being cooler now, I think that it it now it heightens Cooler in a negative criticism. Way. It's not Cooler. like he was not doing this stuff prior. Like when he was bringing up stuff on Twitter, when he was winning, it was, you know, presented as like this is a quirky aspect of Tony Khan. And now that they are they are cooler, it's looking as a guy that's kind of losing it. And I think it's it's neither extreme. I mean, I I I'm trying to think back like to when they were winning and thinking of, of examples like like we might have seen over the past week, you know, like uh, 
and and I I I my memory is not the best, you know, as people know. I mean, if you go back to when they did that head to head battle back in 2021, the Friday Mm -hmm. night, I mean, he was, he was garnering this kind of attention, even remember that time. And by this point, the, the head to head battle may have been over, but um, you know, just the way he went on about like the bots that are all coming after them and stuff. And for all we know, like, we don't know how true or untrue that was. They never revealed like this, this study or whatever they did that went into it. But Mm -hmm take that same argument today and he's Mm -hmm. arguing about twitter bots even if it's legit how does that come across today versus two years ago there's a different perception when you are perceived as the number two company instead of the hot rising alternative that they have somewhat lost that image right now it feels like he's complaining about losing what we all perceive to be Okay, so I'm not going to say a fair fight because they had The Undertaker and John Cena on their show, but we all knew the terms going into battle, right? Okay, you were going to throw your best thing. NXT was going to throw their best thing. Tony Khan was going to ask for, a, you know, a, 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 what is it, an overrun. They're going to give him four extra minutes. He's going to do Minoru Suzuki versus Eddie Kings. Everybody was throwing everything they had into the show. Mm-hmm. So from that sense, we knew what the terms of battle were. And from that sense, it was fair. To Now, the Cena Taker tweet afterwards... Just or not, it came across to many people like it was complaining about unfair rules after the fact, after you had already agreed to the terms. And this might be, you know, to what you're saying, um, it just makes them look bad after losing a battle and complaining about why you lost. Um, I think he should have just taken it. You know, and more more importantly than that, beyond all of this, I feel like he's tweeting emotionally. And again, as the head of a, of a major company, when you have so many people that are relying on your public image for their livelihood, you should not be using social media like that. It's very irresponsible. Yeah, it's, you know, you can I, I can certainly see when you have people like um, Kenny Omega and Adam Copeland who are out there talking about how, you know, we're all happy for each other. We don't have this anger against the other side like you fans do. It's like, okay, you can lecture your audience about how they act online, but at the same time, it's like from the top down, and this is on both sides, both sides, uh, y- you see this this competitive battle um, where that very much is the case, that they are in this fight and they are not just happy to be participants in this game like they are they are playing for keeps this tuesday was you know evidence of that from both sides and i don't even discourage that i think sometimes people are a little too sensitive to the fact that yeah you are going to have warring fan bases here it can get out of control but there's also a excitement to it that it helps the industry that it's you know it's my team against yours and yeah Mm -hmm. that's always it's not always going to generate the most enlightening takes from people online, but that is what we are creating here and trying to recreate a period that is so romanticized to this audience of the late 90s that if only we could go back to that. Well, here's as close as you're going to get to it, and this is what comes with it. It's like, yeah, fans are going to be very competitive, as are your people I- involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, again, you head into a, like you know a very tense matchup, okay? Um, David Beckham versus uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying to pull out a a football reference. Soccer Zinedine reference. Zidane. <laughs> they actually teamed up together. They were on the same team for oh, a were they? period. Okay. Yeah, they, they, they probably opposed each other at some point too. Anyway, you head into a big, you know, uh, high stakes, um, you know, World Cup qualifying match. All right, uh, things are tense, things are heated, but after the match, you line up. You exchange your jerseys, you shake your hands and say, hey, good game. Let's let's I'm going to get you next time. That sort of sentiment. And and it's just I mean, it's probably just because we're we're in such a I don't know, contentious like world where it has to be this or it has to be other. But I really wish it was more like these companies could just shake their hands and be like, good game. Let's duke it out again. What in, in November when this has to happen again? Yeah, well, I mean. We're not getting that way. We're not. We're not. Like, but I think and, uh, remember, frankly, remember like, Hunter. Remember Hunter's response was, "What is it? It, it's not a marathon, not a race." And he didn't he congratulate or like AEW on that first weekend. That's I mean, I I recall the the comment about the piss ant company and to Ariel Hawani. Yeah. So what? You beat our develop, developmental group. Group. Big deal. <laughs> Fine. I mean, okay. it, it, it it goes both ways. They've been dismissive of each other. Um, you know what? And. 
you know, and and there's a lot of the fan base like they, they want to see this this kind of thing as well. But sure. I I do feel as a whole this week like I wasn't so much as like if it was like one tweet here or there, but I just think overall, um, I hope personally uh, that that Tony Khan is taking this in stride because I think we've seen a history of promoters that they're on top and then they're they see business go down and they start to just lose sight of what this is. And I hope he is not at at that stage. It's always been a concern of this guy. um, Not so much just like losing control, but a burnout factor. And Mm -hmm. here he is producing all of this television. And it's, it's one thing when you're working all of those hours and you're yielding the results that you desire. It's quite another when you're putting in the exact same, if not more hours, and you're getting less results for the same amount of work. That can be very difficult to rationalize. And something like Tuesday, I'm sure he would have taken great pride if they they could have won that. And I think if he has level-headed people around him, I think you look objectively at a 0.26 on your Tuesday night, uh, what you were up against. And I think you take solace with that, that yes, we did not beat them, but uh, we were not blown out either. And not to be coming back next week with a reactionary book show um, and and more so looking. And that's one thing I will say about both shows on Tuesday, and then we can move on, is that Dynamite had its show that was building to the future, and I wouldn't say they just hot shot at anything just for Tuesday. And even for NXT, you can argue all the names were certainly a a hot shotting tactic, but they were all linked to younger talents. They were building up Halloween havoc. Like no one was there to just be even Braun Breaker. Like yes, he was in the spot to just take the choke slam, but I really don't feel this was like. Um, a terrible moment for Braun Breaker. It was closer to what we saw with the Raw anniversary show at the beginning of this year, where it was very different, where you had the the talent from the past come back, but it was the current talent that was still featured in a prominent spot. So I thought both shows, it was not a case of just um, booking for the night, but rather booking for weeks from now as well on top of it. I, I... I think it was both, John. Like, I definitely think they were booking for the night. But while they had the Undertaker there, they're going to have him walk out with Carmelo Hayes at the end. You know, like they were definitely booking to beat AEW. That was their. Oh, oh yeah. I, d- don't don't get me wrong. I'm just saying it was not done in just such a way. In where a vacuum. The NXT right. talent came off as so secondary to the stars that were there that night. And next yeah. week we're watching like the the replacement team instead of the real stars it's and there will be some of that i'm not gonna like next week for nxt are they gonna retain this huge audience that they had Mm -hmm. are they coming back next tuesday we don't know we'll find out